explain to them what cyber threat intelligence is and then tell them a little bit about like what you do. Okay. Yeah, I really wish I would have looked up the textbook definition <laughs> before cool. this. Um, but essentially, it's taking information about threats and they do need to be relevant to you. Otherwise, you'll be searching forever. Um, but you take that information and you essentially process it in a way that makes sense for the organization that you work for. And by processing, I mean either investigate for more information, tie it to other data that you have or have been tracking, um, make sure your stakeholders are aware of this information, make sure it's disseminated properly, make sure you're collecting feedback from your internal stakeholders so that you make sure your mission is on point and you're not all over the place with the data that you're monitoring or the, the threats that you're tracking. It doesn't help me to track you know, some actor out of North Korea if they never had a motivation to target anyone in my industry, if they only go after like healthcare, for instance. I, that's nice to know, I guess, but it doesn't help me in my daily work. So I'm looking for like the keyword here, and my manager always bags me on this, is relevant. Is it relevant, right? Because um, there's a world of threat actors, and they run huge organizations. Think of like a Walmart. There's threat, threat actors who run organizations as big as Walmart. And they're very organized, they're very strategic, but if they don't have, you know, the motivation, the tools to actually do anything to you, then you don't need to spend a lot of time on that. Um, in my daily work, um, since I've only been doing this for maybe seven or eight months now, um, I mostly spend my time setting up like different monitoring for our team, again, for relevant things. Um, writing some of our bi-weekly threat intelligence reports, either on the industry news or things that directly impact us. Um, right now, I'm actually working on my monthly threat intelligence briefing. It's my month to brief. Um, so we'll put together information about different threats that make sense for us. Um, and then a lot of my time has honestly been spent learning. My manager has been very supportive of me coming into this domain and has given me an unlimited amount of resources almost to really like go and get um, my skills up, you know, around like analytical, analytical thinking, around just like understanding how to classify threats, track threats, stuff like that. Um, so I know I'm in a very privileged position to have like that level of support for sure. That's dope. That's dope. Like to be in like good organizations, like is really underrated. Like people really don't understand either how good or how bad it is until they leave you somewhere. Yeah. And, uh, like I recently just started a, a, a new job with uh, JP Morgan and I'm doing something totally different. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I'm still trying to see if I'm really like it or not. I ain't mm -hmm. gonna lie. I think I will, but this has just been week one. Uh, it's just been putting me like in a lot of meetings and stuff like that, which is kind of like, you know, as somebody even been in the game as long as me, I feel like, it's not overwhelming, but it can be confusing because, like, I don't even know what's going on. Like, I really don't yeah. even need to be in this meeting. So I just go in them just so, because I don't know these people yet, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm in um, I'm in the DFW area. All of them are in Ohio. I just join them just so they can't, like, go back and say, oh, he didn't join the meetings or whatever. But mm -hmm. if they do say that, I'm like, what I'm going to contribute to the meeting? If they, if they yeah. ask me, I say, hey, this is Day number five, what am I going to do? <laughs> Maybe it's um, to give you like situational awareness around different conversations. Like one thing I do pretty much whenever I start any job is I don't say a word. <laughs> I don't have an opinion on anything. Let me watch. Let me see. Let me assess. And then I'll let you know if anything comes up, if anything comes up. Yeah, so, definitely. You'd be surprised though how sometimes you join those meetings that don't seem like they impact you too much. And a, t a month or two later, you're like, dang, they was talking about that. And now I kind of see how that could connect dots. So definitely, you know, good luck with that. <laughs> I don't love the onboarding process at most companies. <laughs> um, but, you know, try to take it the best you can. What's onboarding? <laughs> my last job, like I, I have a whole video. Like it was funny because I had it on my Patreon at first. And I just put it on YouTube and everybody just started mm -hmm. seeing it or whatever. And it's like entitled like, why I quit Goldman Sachs. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was not. I actually ongoing. saw that. I actually yeah. saw that. I was a little investigated on you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Had to make uh, sure you were legit, you know. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, no, nah, but I just, like I said, it's just funny. Like, you know, for me, me and my coworker, like she started a month after me. Like, it's no way possible I should be like helping her more than the people that's been there longer than us helping us. Mm-hmm. Know, that That's pretty, you know, that was pretty wild. And, you know. Unfortunately, that's pretty standard. <laughs> um, in working in tech and working in cybersecurity, you know, I have definitely walked into companies that you see on billboards and, you know, they got all the stuff, you know, Tell the truth, you get the there and they don't have no processes, no internal processing, no onboarding plan. Um, my manager, when I first started at Twilio, um, after my like generic company onboarding, she literally sat me down and she said, okay, here's the system where stuff comes in. Use your best judgment. And I've been using my best judgment for almost four years. <laughs> But no, nah, I mean, I feel you. Like, like me and my manager had a talk. He said, "Look, he's like, I brought you in because you already know what you're doing, and you're gonna get pushback on pretty much stuff that don't make sense. You know, you're gonna mm-hmm. ask them like, oh, why are we doing it like this or that?' I'm like, I have no problem doing that yeah. whatsoever because I always been like that. Because if I know an easier way, I'm like, that don't make sense. Like before I left, because I, I was help, I helped them go to uh, service now, like for the ticketing system. Because some mm-hmm. of the ways we did incidents." Management didn't make sense to me. I was like, well, now that we got this, y'all should do it like this because this makes more sense and it's less time consuming. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to just pose the same thing to them. I mean, and I really don't care because now I'm at the scenes like, you know, you can't just say what you want to me because he was like, he was like, look, hey, we bought you in. Like, and you, you're used to finance and then fintech or whatever. Like, you say, we bought you in as a VP, so you can say what you want. I was like, bet. Mm-hmm. Say less. <laughs> I will. And I've been, you know, also making other friends to where I'm like, if I don't like this team, I'm just like, hey, man, look, I like what y'all do. Cause, yeah, uh, don't be afraid to keep your options open. Like, I I'm a man. Like, you know, we never had problems with that. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> That's a whole different subject. <laughs> no, but with jobs specifically, keep your options open. Don't stay where you're not wanted, needed, happy. Like, I, the way I look at it is if I, online, I'm working, like, I made a choice to do that today oh, yeah. until Definitely. I make a different choice. <laughs> Definitely. And no, I mean, I, I've, I've said this, like, on previous podcast episodes, but it's like, treat your career and job search just like you do your relationships, you know? Mm. Is give it a, a good fit? Right. And then give them a couple months if it ain't, you know, on to the next one. And you find somebody good. Hold on to them. Now, the only difference is when it comes to your career, it's like, it just depends on what they're going to do and like how they advance in you. If not, you mm-hmm. know, you can always go to something like, you know, old people, and I want to say they probably was born between 1960 to like 1980. We're going to call them people old people because my mm-hmm. parents are included. They they mm-hmm. they were taught, hey, you stay somewhere a while so jobs can know you loyal. I'm like, nah, I don't care about that. There's no loyal. 